Today, I want to address an age old question that you've probably seen time and time again. Does an iPhone actually get slower as it gets older? Every year when a new version of iOS comes out, you'll find people talking about how it made their iPhone slower. Is Apple doing that intentionally to try to get you to upgrade? Is your phone just getting slower as it gets older? There are so many factors, but there's only one way to find out if any of it's true, and that's to buy an iPhone XS, the oldest phone that Apple still supports under iOS 17, and then find out if it's slower than when it was new. But how are we going to do that? This phone came out nearly six years ago. Well, fortunately, I happened to find this. That's right, a brand new still sealed iPhone XS. This is our perfect control group. Because now we can compare a six-year-old iPhone XS on the latest version of iOS 17 with a battery at 83% capacity to what it would have been like straight out of the box nearly six years ago. And hopefully we can get to the bottom of this conundrum once and for all. But first, a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Charge and their new Chargeek 170 power bank. Probably the coolest looking power bank there is. Wrapped in this very futuristic transparent prism, you'll find 24,000 milliamp hours of battery power that can deliver up to 140 watts through a single USB-C. That's right, you can fast charge a 16 inch MacBook Pro with this thing. Actually, you can do that and fast charge an iPhone 15 Pro at the same time, thanks to 170 watt total output. Yeah, this thing is not messing around. You can keep tabs on your power output thanks to a built-in display that shows the input and output wattage as well as charge time remaining. And you can bring ChargeGeek anywhere you go thanks to its airplane safe 86.4 watt hour capacity and IP66 water resistance. It's the go anywhere, do anything, charge anything power bank solution. Check out the link in the description below to learn more. A big thanks to them for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to it. So I bought this sealed iPhone XS on eBay and honestly, I was a little bit nervous that it was going to be fake. But now that this thing has arrived, I am pretty convinced that it's real. First of all, the packaging, it's appropriately worn for something that's never been opened. I also pulled the IMEI off the back and ran it through an Apple serial number checker, which showed the device has never been activated. So I think we're in the clear for finding a brand new six year old iPhone. So let's go ahead and unbox it. Oh. That sound. <laughs> Look at that. A good sign that this is real is you can see a bunch of scratches in the plastic in the outline of where the phone is embossed. And that indicates that the packaging has been on the phone the entire time, so that's good. Oh, look at this. There's something just kind of weird about unboxing a new old iPhone. I, this one isn't even that old, but oh man. It's so shiny, the edges haven't had a chance to get scratched yet. Let's go ahead and peel the back. Oh, look at that. Gosh, this really was a beautiful phone. Half the reason to do this was just for the ASMR. And look at that, remember when Apple used to give you free earbuds with your iPhone? <laughs> Those were the days. We also have a charging brick here, which is wrapped in the period correct a uh, little paper packaging that they used to do. We get a SIM eject tool, because of course we have a SIM tray. This isn't an old iPhone, so we're all generally pretty familiar with what you get in the box. All right, so we got a little battery bank, and we're gonna find out if this thing is going to boot up or if the battery has survived. It's charging! It's booting. Oh, we got the charge sound. <laughs> oh, look at that. And look at that, this phone is six years old, but I just got a prompt on my iPhone to set it up. This is the kind of features that make Apple so goaded. This is a six year old phone that's not even on the current version of iOS and it's still integrated in the ecosystem. It's just great. However, we are gonna set this phone up manually because I want these two to be as close to identical as I can get them. All right, so that's Face ID all set up. And because this thing is brand new, it should be on iOS 12. They really want us to set up a whole bunch of stuff. Hey Siri. 
Oh, remember that Siri animation? Hey Siri, <laughs> apologies if your day has now been ruined. Going through this setup process is the type of thing that for some people is gonna be incredibly nostalgic because there's a lot of people that are really obsessed with previous versions of iOS. But some people are just gonna say like, yeah, you're setting up a recent iPhone. Oh, look at that, <laughs> the, the wallpaper. This is really bringing me back. All right, let's see what version of iOS we are running. General, about, ooh, 12.1.2. You know what that means, folks? This test is going to work because we now have an original iPhone XS on the iOS version that it launched with, and we can now see how it has aged over the past six years. So we're gonna get started with some simple usability testing. So let's power on both phones at the same time to see if the newer version of iOS takes a bit longer to boot. So you can see the Apple logo actually showed up a little bit quicker, but let's see how long it takes in total. Oh, interesting. So iOS 12 definitely booted up faster than 17. It was only a couple of seconds, but that was definitely a noticeable difference. Now, in the interest of keeping everything comparable, I've only installed a couple of apps that are benchmarking tools specifically compatible with iOS 12 and 17. But before we get into any of those, I wanna test the general usability to see if there's any immediately noticeable lag or stuttering on our used iPhone. So straight away, when, when scrolling back and forth and, and navigating the operating system, I'm definitely not seeing any real differences. Let's just go ahead and open up the news app, for example, and try scrolling through there. So it does look to be slightly ahead on iOS 12. Perhaps iOS 17 is a little bit slower, but now that we're actually in, scrolling through on both phones, I'm not really noticing any differences between them. They both look extremely fluid. Let's try opening the camera and we'll switch it to the front facing one, take a couple of photos. Again, not really seeing any differences here. Actually, there was just a touch of lag on our used iPhone, but man, we are really having to scrape the bottom of the barrel to find any differences. Let's do some more formal stress testing to see if there's anything that will show up there. So we'll run the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark on both devices and we'll see if there's any differences. So interestingly, our old phone finished first, but the, the new phone is scoring slightly higher. It's about a 1.5% difference, hardly conclusive. I think we gotta run the test again. This time our new phone finished first, and actually, huh, the performance is still higher. And this time it's actually a bigger gap. That's about 9% difference between these two devices. I think we gotta do one more test well, there you have it. The third test result is in and we're still seeing about 5% better performance on our new phone versus our used. Let's now run the compute benchmark and we'll see if there's any differences there. Uh, well, this time our old phone is outperforming our new phone. And that's an 8% difference, which is about what we were seeing in the CPU test. Let's do that again and see if this is a consistent difference. Well, now it's actually grown slightly. Let's do one more, you know, rules of three. We like to give it a fair shot. And look at that, it's grown even further still. So it seems pretty consistent that our old phone is doing better than our new phone in this particular test. All right, so now we're gonna run the 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme Benchmark. And I will say, I started these at the same time. It seems like our new iPhone is a few frames ahead. So our new phone finished way before the old phone and it's actually now scoring higher. So we had better performance for the new phone in the Geekbench CPU, better performance on our old phone in Geekbench Compute, and now better performance for the GPU on our new phone. Huh. 
So interesting results from our new versus used iPhone comparison. And it does in fact seem like there are some minor differences in the speed of these phones. It's, it's hard to attribute those to age or iOS or battery status, but we did notice on average that the new iPhone was slightly faster, just a couple of percentage points in our synthetic tests, as well as launching applications slightly quicker and booting up slightly quicker. However, the big takeaway here is given that this is a literally brand new phone on iOS 12 compared to a six year old one with 83% battery capacity on the latest version of iOS 17, this is not a difference that you would notice if you didn't have the phone side by side. But of course we do have to keep in mind that these are just a few simple tests and after running them, I was kind of like, oh, okay, what else can we do? Should we add a whole bunch of apps on it? Should I use these phones for a couple of weeks? And then it dawned on me, that is the factor that we can't account for. I don't know about you guys, but I don't often reset my phone back to zero, reinstall the operating system from scratch, and then re-download my apps manually. No, you buy the phone, you set it up, and you just use it until you get a new one. So any slowdowns that you would notice are probably more likely as a result of what's on the phone as opposed to the phone itself. If you haven't shut your phone off and turned it back on again in a year, that's more likely to cause any feelings of slowness or lagginess than the phone itself being throttled. So it seems unlikely to me that a modern iPhone is going to feel limited by its processor before it's limited by Apple discontinuing iOS support. There's other factors that could contribute to an older iPhone feeling slow, but I don't think the performance is one of them. And if you found this video interesting, let me know in the comments down below. I'm very curious to hear you guys' thoughts on this. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.